Hi. Now, first I'm going to say this lesson is not uh, fun. This lesson is necessary. It's probably the most important lesson you've ever had on lighting. It's something you must know. It, it concerns the inverse square law, which is very simple in itself, is that when you move a light back, so you double the distance of the light from the subject, you only get a quarter of the light hitting the subject. Now, that in itself is very simple, but there are lots of consequences to that. And this lesson will show you. Unfortunately, right at the end, it has to be at the end, I tell you the real consequences and why you should be careful of this. Now, during the expo, during the lesson, I go back to quite basic things about aperture. So I'm sorry about that. It's obvious that a lot of you know it, but a lot of you don't. So um, there's a bit of everything in here, and I have to do a lesson for all levels of photography because it is so important. Right, let's get on. It wasn't fun to make, I tell you. <laughs> well, what have we here, I hear you say? Well, it's only uh, six pieces of card, from one to six. But what we're going to do is measure the light that's falling on them at the moment. Excuse me, I'll just walk in front. Now, if I measure this one, uh, if I measure it properly, get everything set, right, it gives us... A nice reading of f64.9 so that that's f90 in anyone's language it's only a tenth of a stop there it is now what about measuring the other end well if we measure the other end we see we get a nice exposure of f20 or uh, 32.1 sorry f32.1 now this might all be a bit confusing so I'm going to explain something straight away f-stops like f90 um, we used a lot or we use a lot on large format photography and we go from f90 to f120 to f240 to 480 etc etc now at 480 the hold is very very small as you can imagine but on large format that's what we use so i've done a little chart for you now the 90 represents of course the light side where the, where the number one is brightest and the f22 or was it 30 the f32 represents the darkest side so we'd have to open to 32 to get it correctly exposed so i'll just show you the scale and all these are f stops so we start as we know at uh, very low <laughs> f1.1 or whatever and we go then to up to f8 8 and a half 16 uh, 22, 32, 45, 40, 60, 64, 90, um, and further on. So what's the result of this? Well, it's very simple. The result is that we have, from F32 to 90, we have one, two, three F-stops difference. So what's three F-stops difference? Well, from 32 to 45 would be twice the amount of light. 45 to 64, four times the amount of light, 64 to 90, eight times the number of light. So we've got the amount of light. So we've got eight times the amount of light falling on the 90 than we do have on the 32. <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> so that's it. That's the important thing. Now, the other important thing is just look at the shadow and we'll compare that later. I've put down a bar here and we should look at that shadow and just bear that in memory we'll probably go back to it but i'd just like to see the difference with the shadow before we move the light now i'm going to measure the distance the light is away from the number one uh, and it's 24 centimeters away well we're going to move it to 48 centimeters away and see what happens now we've moved the light away, we've doubled the distance. So what has it given us now? We've doubled the distance of the light. We have got 45 now. And here we have 22.4, but the other was 45.1. Uh, we're not being very accurate. So let's say now there's two stops difference. Instead of the three we had before. So we've doubled the distance of the light to the subject, and that's given us, as we say, f45 and a bit, 
and F22 and a, a bit as well. Well, of course, that's two stops. So that's the interesting thing now. We've moved double the light and we've cut it down from, four, from three stops to two stops. Now, where this becomes interesting is with uh, a portrait, for example, because if the light is very close, it'll be very bright going to dark. If the light is further away, it will be very light, but there it won't be quite as dark because the fall off is slower. The further away the light, the slower the fall off of the light. But of course, there's another reaction to this and that's the shadow of the light. As the light gets further away, the shadow will become stronger, clearer to see. So you can imagine as you move the light away with a portrait or any still life, the shadow from the nose or from a bottle or from a vase will become sharper. Interesting, isn't it? Now this is the shadow and brought the bar back in and this is the shadow now from 48 centimetres. Well, let's go and double the light even further. We'll take it even further away. So now I've moved the light uh, back to 96 centimetres from the number one. Um, and here we would expect F22. It's 22.3. And here F16.2. So we're just over now, just over a stop difference. Right, now we're getting uh, a bit further away and things are changing. Right, now, we have on the bright side, always look on, no, we have on the bright side 22.3. So about there. And we have on the dark side 16.2. So that's about there, sorry, 22.3 is about there, and 16 is about there. But anyway, now we're very nearly a stop. So having moved the light further back, we're only now a stop between one side and the other. So that's twice the amount of light hitting the light side that is on the dark side. Now, let's have a look further on. Not forgetting the shadow, of course. And here it is, the shadow from 96 centimetres. It's getting a little sharper, isn't it? Well, not sharper, but more identifiable. Now I've moved it back to 192 centimetres, which is exactly double what we had before. And the meter reading here is 11.5, exactly. And here, is 11.2. So we're almost the same exposure between them now. And what about our shadow? Well, let's drop it down and we'll have a little look. About where it was. Right, now this is getting very interesting. So we've gone again, we've gone away again. And what have we got now? Well, we've got F. Oz, sorry, F11.5. Oh, I've run out of F stops. Oh, ah, ah, ah. We've got F11.5 and 11.2. Well, I mean, now we've almost got the same light on one side as the other. So you see how it all can change very easily. Now, if I'm shooting a portrait or a still life or a fashion shot, this is very important because supposing I've got six people, bum, 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 how do I get the light, an even light, from one to the other? Well, it's very simple. I get the light a long way away. But that will increase the hardness of the shadow, which means I've got to bring a reflector in the other side. So you can start to see why this is incredibly important. As well as, of course, the basic rule that the light, as you double the distance, is a quarter of the light hitting the subject, and that is the basic rules. So anyway, there we go. Now, we'll get on to talking about it, and uh, there we are. Now what about these shadows? Well, this is the final shadow, nice and hard and crisp, 
and this is the first one, um, much less identifiable. Right, now what are the consequences of all this, really? Let's have a think about it logically. Very often we use more than one light. So if we've got the right power at the back and a bit too much light at the front, we tend to move the light further away. Well, now you see what can happen. It changes the contrast. It changes the shadow. So, but we do it without thinking all about that. And with, uh, with flash, it's not too bad. You can just turn the flash down if you're able to. Maybe you've got it on uh, lowest power already. With continuous light, what do you do? You can't turn a rear stat to cut the quality, uh, the amount of light down. The only thing you can do if you've got continuous light and you've got more than one bulb in the light is take a bulb out or take two bulbs out. If not, by moving the light away, you're changing the whole balance of the light. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Don't forget to send some pictures, upload some pictures on itchyphoto.com. But really, this lesson is a lot deeper than you imagine. It really has to be into your mind. Cheers.